The island was bought by Tibetan Buddhists some 15, 16 years ago, uh, and their main base is in Samya Ling Monastery, which is in Dumfrieshire, near Lockerbie, Lockerbie Langham area. And you can see the man standing there is Lama Yeshe, the, the monk in the yellow and red. He's the abbot of Sami Ling, and he's the director of the Holy Isle project. So, Holy Island and the center is not a monastery. We're not a Buddhist center, we're not a monastery. We are a center for well-being. We like to think of ourselves as that. We're open for everybody. We're here to promote well-being and healthy living, um, personal development in the sense of people coming here and finding a space they can do their own thing in. We're here to promote sustainable living, which we are moving towards ourselves. You know, we're not, we haven't got there yet at all. Um, and a more sort of environmental way of, of doing things. The aims of Holy Island is every human being will be able to come here and sort of feel that they are part of this project. It's like a united in our own sort of uh, goal, that is to say uh, we take care of the environment, we work with the uh, uh, interfaith different religious group because many, uh, many, many times in the world uh, people manage to fight and kill in the name of religion. So I was very concerned this should not happen. Faith should be there to enrich our mind and uh, help us to become positive and engage in the very best way we can. We have 2,500 years of history. The monks and the nuns and the lamas, they have been somehow working with the planet. So if we have, say, monastery or nunnery, we are the protectors of the environment. So if we have some things built here, we would like to protect the trees so nobody can just chop it up for no good reason. People just don't explore the things unnecessarily. So it's like our duty that mind and body we call inseparable. If people's minds are not positive, if you don't have a, a we call joyful mind, it affects our body. So people have a lot of different symptoms of sickness. Then we have to relate this to the earth. We call earth is like the mother earth, which nourishes our needs. And I can give you one good example, like if any of you ever went to Tibet, uh, our uh, area is so high, the uh, grass in the field will be very, very short. There's hardly any this abundance of grass. But somehow, the animals who eat those short grass, the people who manage to produce food from there, it seems to have all the minerals. It can actually sustain your physical needs because it's like it's a package. Earth is there to sustain human being or life form. What happened in the new age is uh, in the name of uh, uh, development, in the name of progress, we indiscriminately have taken everything out of the uh, ground, earth. So if you take all the minerals out, then we can make bigger, nice looking apples, or we can have a, a bigger supermarket and a, so much abundance of food and all looks nice and beautiful but there isn't uh, enough nourishment. So that's why we end up need to take all this vitamin A, B, C, minerals. That's because we managed to, it's like, make the earth poor, not rich. Like animal mothers can't feed the, their uh, uh, babies. Just like the earth is not able to sustain our people's needs, so I think mankind really need to uh, look ourselves and say, are we happier? Are we healthier? Many people say we live longer. Many people say we made great progress. But then even I notice within my being in Europe sort of 40 old years, as people get wealthier and wealthier, 
people mind is very much disturbed it causes so much unnecessary stress so much challenge and uh, we need so much uh, energy so we are more or less able to sort of use everything we can get hold of so then we have to think what is future for next generation if we take everything you can get hold of but gradually gradually what i would like to see is a holy island is absolutely self-containing a community they are able to produce their own food they are able to somehow uh, create their own sort of consumption of energy like electricity i wish to have this wind from here because the wind is something plant it looks like our option at the moment is going to be a 25 kilowatt windmill at each end which will make a big difference at that end because we've got a all year round occupancy and most of the obviously most of the wind generated is in, is in the winter and we've also got a, all the rooms have got storage heaters down there so we can more or less heat the place from that 25 k's that we'll get from that windmill and here it'll just just have to fit in. There'll be certain times, maybe in the winter, when here will be a little bit of sell back to the grid. Maybe not much, but uh, and then in the summer it should well, significantly reduce the bills anyway. It's been a lot of hard work. Um, there was uh, this was a flower garden previously, and uh, with small beds, a lot of stone paths. A lot of stone in the soil and um, we've stripped turf back made larger beds uh, used what stone we can in for piles so as you can see we've got piles of stones around us which we've just taken out of the beds that I think has been the hardest task um, but if, if it wasn't for the fact that the soil appears to be fer very fertile it would be more of a challenge um, the greatest challenge to, I suppose, during the winter time has been the wind more than anything. Uh, predominantly from the southwest, and it just rocks, rocks the plants to death, pretty much. Um, and when the wind blows across from Aaron, we get the salt spray coming over the wall, even though we're 50 meters from the sea. Uh, the idea of raised bed is 